so proud to see you guys here. Uh, I look around and I see people who have contributed massively to it. I mean, I'm going to talk about that now. In thinking about the opening part of this, I, uh, two kind of headlines came. One was, my mother is an awful liar. And the other is, don't tell Fran. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about that. I want you to imagine September the 26th. I talked to the doctor in the hospital and said, and we're not going to resuscitate if she goes down again. Um, so, I ran, I was on the way to Chicago airport. It took 15 minutes to arrive her so that she could actually hear and speak. And during that 15 minutes, the nurses kept saying, Fran's on the phone, Fran's on the phone. And uh, I said to her, how are you now? I'm grand, don't worry. And uh, that's an example of uh, our lies. Other, other lies she's told that were things like, we had a, we had a tradition, I, I would read the Irish Independent, she would read the Irish Times, I would read the English papers, and uh, we would send each other cooking in the post. And uh, this is, for you know, a later target on a Tuesday became a, a big issue. Anyway, but I noticed that the way, the way we did this was I'd, I'd know which articles I'd send and I'd make comments and, you know, about, you know, politics or whatever. whatever. And uh, usually then when I rang, we'd have a sensible conversation about these articles. But I noticed that the quality of the conversation coming back seemed to be deteriorating. So... And this made me a little bit irritated. Now, if I got the trouble to cut out these bloody articles and write things, the least you could do is read them the bloody thing. But anyway, I then discovered over a period of time when I came back, and I noticed she hadn't sent me cutting, she just kept entire Irish Times. I was wondering, what's she doing that for? Why is she keeping a whole paper? And then I looked at the Times crossword, and I realised, because normally, in the Irish Times, the crossword would be finished, or nearly finished. It was a major blow that she couldn't finish the Irish Times crossword. And the reason, she lost her eyesight. But <coughs> she was an awful liar, so I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, um, let me give you another example. <coughs> she told me that she used to walk down the village and... Uh, because I'd ask her, because I wanted her to keep walking, to massage her ankles and do football stretches with her, believe it or not, to try and keep her legs strong. And she'd tell me that she walked down the village and, and then she'd met all these people. But when later on I talked to Freddie and, Freddie and stuff, I discovered that often she didn't walk down from the village. She probably walked 15 or 20 yards and then got on the bus and then people were having to angry people were spotting her struggling and taking her back home. But I wasn't aware of that because my mother was a terrible liar. <laughs> and then I just want to talk about uh, how she came across what she called the three angels. Uh, Geraldine, Ruth and Freddie. It was Ruth who was the gateway to the three angels. Um, I, I'm only going on what my mum's told me was so you tell me I get this wrong, but what happened was she couldn't see, she wanted something in Tescott's. <coughs> and uh, she, I think either she asked you or you volunteered, which, which way was it? She asked me. Yeah. Yeah, and we <coughs> saw she was vulnerable and, and, and whatever, and not only got all of us shopping, to bear in mind, Ruth is at work now, right? And, um, but she also walked, she said to her, this is what my mum said, she said, where are you going? And my mum said she's gone across to the bus stop. And Ruth walked her all the way across, sat with her at the bus stop. And that's 75 buses, about one every, one every 40 minutes. So it's quite a long way, especially if you can't see your watch and you don't know what time it is. And uh, so Ruth sat with her and discovered that her position and said to her, look, what's your phone number? You don't need to go try and get her shopping on your own. Me and Freddie, we, we'll, we'll sort it out. And, uh, and it was through that that uh, the last two years of my mother's life were 
massively enhanced from what they otherwise would be. Um, and what, uh, what Geraldine uh, and Freddie and Ruth and also Ken, Ken Jackson, well Ken Jackson used to do, she was so worried about flying. I don't know why she's worried about flying because I mean I fly all the time, but she's, she is always was worried about flying. Ken, where are you Ken? We used to go and see her and be with her when the flights were there and talk to her and whatever. And generally we used to do other things and she was really generally used to say, he's travelling business class. <laughs> <laughs> All these guys are asking him what more drink does he want, what food does he want, what other services does he want. Why are you worried about him? <laughs> and, uh, and in that sense, Geraldine filled a role which had previously been held by a family friend called Sheila. Sheila always you guys know Sheila, remember Sheila? She always uh, made my mum think on the bright side of life, you know? And uh, always told her not to worry about it. I want to also talk about my mother's feistiness. Um, you can't say anything about my mother without talking about her feistiness. And she was feisty partly for a reason, you know? Um, people have said to me, how come someone who was talented enough to be on two national TV stations playing music and was one of the top salespeople in England but while also looking after a small child. How did she end up with no money? Well, there's a story to that. Not many people in their life lose two houses. But she lost her first house because when she had me, she had to stop touring and she had to find a source of income. And she bought a shop with accommodation abroad in Belfast. And because where she was from in Belturba, the Catholics and the Protestants got on fine, she did not anticipate the problem of a Southern Irish Catholic buying a shop just off the Shanker Road <laughs> before the IRA started the 1950s bombing campaign. And that, that was a problem. And effectively, my mum was told, you either go or you're going to be burnt out, which meant she couldn't get a proper price for the house, uh, so she lost a lot on that. And that's why I was brought up in a poor part of Manchester in a one bedroom bed sit. And then she, she had another house in Glendalkin, but when she broke up with Brendan Devine, there was no divorce. So when she went to court, my mum is a terrible liar, I remember. So she didn't tell me about the court case. So he came up with all sorts of cock and bull stuff about her behaviour and marriage and all the rest of it. And the only witness, the only other person living in that house who could have testified on her behalf was me. And why did she not tell me about it? Because I was doing my finals at university and she didn't want me to be distracted. So she lost two houses in her life. And then, um, so she was, she was feisty. A few things about the feistiness that I remember fondly. When I was elected at Warwick University Students' Union to the number two position, I was very proud. I had my office and all this. So when I called mum over, I was going to take her to my office. But uh, my English colleagues, thinking stereotypically about Irish mothers, they decided to get this contraceptive machine, which... <laughs> had been removed from the wall in the student's union, but obviously some person was on the promise but couldn't get it to work properly and got annoyed with it and knocked it off the wall. And when my mother arrived in the office, they had put this contraceptive machine right in the middle of my desk. So she walks in, glamorous, looking at the part, and she says to me, why have you got a contraceptive machine in the middle of your desk? And I'm going... Up, 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 because I didn't. <laughs> and uh, anyway, she immediately twigged what was going on. And she turned around to the, the guys and she said to them, I don't know why you thought I'd be shocked by that. I'm on my own on this holiday. I might have needed a machine like that. <laughs> so um, 